Oh dear, Sir Keir Starmer's poll ratings have plunged to minus 14 following his bizarre decision to prioritise junior doctors and well-paid train drivers over 10 million pensioners, a third of whom are living in poverty. Sir Keir Starmer is now more unpopular than the all-female reboot of Ghostbusters. Yes, he's more unpopular than the peanut butter Kit Kats. Keir Starmer is more unpopular than Prince Andrew at a Girls Aloud concert. Yes, it's that bad. And Labour's popularity looks set to plummet further in the October budget, with predicted rises in inheritance tax, capital gains tax, and the further clobbering of pensioners, this time with their pensions. So what else are this new government going to tax? Walking to the news agents? Brushing your hair? Watching cat videos at two in the morning? I've always thought blinking and breathing were unnecessary luxuries that should be met with some kind of levy. Meanwhile, the PM's zeal for net zero will be emboldened with the news that a court has blocked plans for the UK's first coal mine in 30 years. Good news for the despotic regimes whose fossil fuels will no doubt be buying when Ed, Ed Miliband's expensive punt on flaky renewables backfires horribly. Meanwhile, the VAT raid on private schools is seeing pressure grow for places in state schools and several modest private schools, a far cry from Eton, but which are doing a great job of educating kids from middle income families, as well as schools that cater for special needs, are now faced with closure or deep cuts. It goes on. An environment hostile to wealth creators and businesses is seeing a brain drain of the super rich, with 10,000 millionaires set to flee the country this year alone. They're about to jump on their private jets and head for Dubai. And who could blame them? The weather in Dubai is better. There's no crime. And human rights, rights are a bit overrated anyway, aren't they? Of course they are. Meanwhile, this new government continues its war on pleasure, following a decision to have people arrested for lighting up a Marlborough in a beer garden. And after a damning report about the disastrous state of our NHS, a sacred cow that must never be criticised, Sir Keir Starmer is preparing a raft of nanny state interventions to, in inverted commas, protect the NHS. Where have we heard that before? Yes, we're going to have a prevention revolution. No TV adverts for junk food allowed before 9 p.m., which means it's only people that stay up for Match of the Day, Newsnight and Gogglebox who will be the fatties. Anyone who turns their telly off after EastEnders will instantly become Kate Moss's stunt double. This is a Labour government that won the election because they were not the Conservatives. It's a Labour government no one was looking forward to, no one celebrated the arrival of, and no one is enjoying. At this stage, Liz Truss's 44 wobbly days in office is starting to look like a template for sound government. Labour have been in for 10 minutes, and already the economy is flatlining, probably as a result of all of this negative talk about their economic inheritance and that imaginary black hole which even Stephen Hawking couldn't find. Rishi Sunak left office with the UK enjoying the highest growth in the G7, which Reeves and Starmer looked to have squandered. It's a cruel irony that Sunak, the man who made the tough choices to deliver high growth, as well as low unemployment and low inflation, is now wandering around his Yorkshire constituency in a freshly waxed barber jacket, inspecting livestock and hearing about the spiralling cost of animal feed. We've ditched a prime minister who turned the economy around and replaced him with someone who's already embarked on policies that will sink it. The Tories were a disastrously tainted brand, and deservedly so, but their punishment beating has come at a high price for the country. We ditched Sunak and replaced him with a human rights lawyer turned politician who doesn't want you to keep your money, heat your home, eat burgers or be unkind on Facebook. Bring back Sunak. All is forgiven. In fact, at this rate, I'd roll out the red carpet for Liz Truss. Welcome to my brilliant panel tonight. My Friday friends, we have Chloe Dobbs. Mike Parry and Andy Williams. Uh, Mike Parry, yeah. if there was an election tomorrow, Labour wouldn't win, would they? Uh, probably not. Uh, I think in the is it eight weeks now that they've mm. been in power, they, we've all started waking up and thinking, uh, ah, what have we done? You know what I mean? Because 
all this nonsensical talk about growing the economy can't possibly happen with the raft of policies they're bringing in, which completely crash the economy. Yeah. And we haven't had Angela Rayner yet get up and introduce her new work in, uh, in the workplace laws, OK? Yeah. More red tape, more rights for workers, shorter hours, less productivity. How can that possibly go towards growth of the economy? And I've always found that socialist politicians are economically illiterate. They have no idea where money comes from. So when they keep giving more and more to the public sector, more and more to the unions, more and more to people who are on their side, where do they think it comes from? It, it comes from the private sector who generate wealth, but what they're doing is they're driving them out. And people say that's not true. Well, Charlie Mullins is going, and he's taking 120 million quid with him, OK? Now, he's just one very successful business in this country. There'll be lots of others. And the other point I'd make is, is that they clearly hate old people. They hate pensioners. They've declared war on pensioners in all sorts of ways. And I think there's more to come. There's a possibility that they will uh, withdraw the 25% that you get knocked off your council tax if you're a single person. And one third of single people in this country are widows who can't afford it. And there's also another fear they'll take away the free travel which old people depend on. It's pernicious, it's nasty, and it's really, really focused on those who are most vulnerable in our society. Andy Williams, it was probably time for a change. It's been good for our democracy, yep. perhaps, to get the Tories out, but you must be disappointed by Labour's start. No, overall, I'm not at all, actually. I think they've made a reasonably good start. In fact, I think mostly they've made a very good start. I completely disagree with Mike about the winter fuel allowance, for example. I think that was a policy that, you know, and we do need to protect those people who are struggling at the bottom. But actually, even AGK admit that of the 10 million people who get winter fuel allowance, mm -hmm. 8 million and don't need it. No, so I that's, agree with well, that. Well, even at AGK, AGK, who are campaigning against the changes to the wind fuel allowance, they say that two million people will be adversely affected, so eight million people don't well, two need it. A lot. Two, uh, two, million, two million is a lot. 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 Two million after this winter. Now, that's, tw that's too many people, obviously. That is too many people. But the point is that the, this is going to be means tested. We're not taking away from the people who need it. And actually, pensioners, the state pension is going up by £460 in April, yeah, to, which is more than. Which is, well, it's, to keep pace with inflation. It's going up by double right. the rate of inflation because inflation is at 2.2%. It's going up by 4.6%. Because that's so, the triple lock don't room. Well, I don't, uh, uh, well, I don't agree with the triple lock either. Labour well. don't care about pensioners because pensioners don't vote Labour. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't agree with that at all. I think if you look at the last 14 years, actually, every single demographic in society, apart from from pensioners has been asked to step up and dip into their pockets and suffer cutbacks, whether it's students, young people, working people, actually, pensioners have been people who consistently hard. time. Yeah, people who work hard. People who work hard. People, right. people, people like who work hard. Yeah. The Tories are starting to look like the good old days. Bring back Liz Truss, all is forgiven. I mean, anyone except from Stalin Starmer. I mean, I thought that Labour were going to be bad, but I really wasn't expecting them to make it so horrendous so quickly. We thought that they'd bring in all the, first of all, the horrendous draconian stuff around free speech. You think that they would, they would ease us into that slowly, but no, straight away, first thing, you're all in prison for writing on Facebook. Yes, and there was a plan, wasn't there, to enforce free speech on campus, which has also been ditched by this government. Yeah. Yep, they've got rid of the legislation that was meant to be brought in, that the Conservatives proposed. I mean, there's been a, a whole load of stuff from the Conservatives that they've decided to ditch. Because for it's example, bad, bad legislation. Uh, they... Uh, but it wasn't Angela their Ray, manifesto. Ange Angela None Rayner of it was in their manifesto. They hid it all, didn't plans they? Plans by Indeed the they did. to stop yeah. terrorists being given social yeah. housing, to stop migrants being prioritised for social housing. I mean, they've ditched all the good stuff that the Tories actually had planned. And well, there they, wasn't much of that. I mean, they massively over-promised and under-delivered. They lied to us at the election. They just made it out as if they were going to solve all the country's problems. Absolutely. No, they didn't. We're going to throw money at they... everything. We're going to fix everything. No. The Tories have ruined everything. We're going to make it all perfect. Yeah, I mean, they've waited they to give us the bad news. 
ended for getting into power. They said had no money. They said throughout the election that it was going to be very, very difficult, that there wasn't much money, that the inheritance... They said before the election, our inheritance will be worse than any government since World War II. They said that beforehand. Now, where I have a problem is that Labour has not been completely truthful about the size of this black hole. There is a black hole. It's half the size they of, of, the of, the details, they, of the number they, they give. They will not give us the details on the black hole. Well, the, They've the, been asked for and the... About uh, how it was calculated. Uh, 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 and, and, and the government have refused to give specific details of us for. And Andy, just getting back to your, oh, 80% oh, of pensioners can afford it, right? That's what AGK well, say. OK, well, whatever you say, a pensioner gets a maximum of £12,500 a year. Do you think it's right? that somebody who gets £12,500 a year should have £300 taken off them and given to a £70,000 train driver. Do you think that's social justice? But that's not, Do you think that's right? That's not what we're talking about, because we're talking that's about... That's what I'm talking about, but well, you can't answer the question. I, I'm trying to. We're, me, we're talking about means testing, right? So the people Which at the bottom... bureaucratic and slow and expensive. The people who... But, it, but it's right. It's the right thing to do. And actually, people who, st yeah. who need that money will still get it. I, we're talking no. about... And I'm not saying that all... I'm not saying that all... I'm not saying... Yeah. They've now made it so, so complicated that there are pensioners, you know, a lot of old people, they don't even have internet, right? 243 uh, questions. Yeah, two, it was either 243 yeah. or 273, something like that. An insane number that is going to be incomprehensible for them. You've got pensioners who there are, uh, there's money that they are eligible for, but they don't even realise it. They don't know how to navigate these really complicated questions. Exactly, and that's, and that's a why... Lot of people a lot of pensioners are going to be in poverty and going to be struggling. And that's why there's a drive underway to make sure that more people sign up to pension credit and it's the number of people who've signed up has doubled in the last couple of weeks because the government has acted and more people are signing up. That's so I think what we're going to... We've also way. got, but haven't very we, we've also got, Andy, the, the, the tax rate on private schools, which is yep. going down very Absolutely badly. Disgusting. Uh, then, then we've got, uh, you know, the promise of, uh, you know, business unfriendly legislation to come from Angela Rayner. Yep. Uh, we're going to have a tax raising budget, even though taxes are currently at the highest level since the second one. Exactly. Well, what was it's that? all doom and gloom, isn't it? Now, I'll agree that the Tories made a horlix of the economy in relation to the debt. There's no wiggle room, we're running a deficit. But it's going to get worse under Labour, isn't it? Well, it's, they didn't just make a horlix of the economy in relation to debt. They made a horlix of the economy in relation to people's personal finances. As you've said, the tax burden is highest since the Second World War. Um, real terms incomes have gone down. Mm. On every single measure, over 14 years, like it or not, they made it worse. Well, the Tories... And I'm afraid, I'm afraid, actually, if you look at a lot of the changes Labour are proposing, it, it, it's, it's not going to happen overnight, but it's going to pay off. It would be nice to have Rishi Sunak back in charge, because no. at least we'd have a growing economy, wouldn't we? <laughs> I mean, the economy, is be the economy didn't grow last month, and you can't put that at Labour's door. No, I mean, no, no, growth is a lagging... It was no, a month figure in July, and for the 18 months before that, it had been growing. And, you know, people... Top say, of the G7. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, top of the G7. People say we should be back in Europe with Germany. Germany are flatlined, and they're going backwards. We're going forwards. Or at least we were until Labour got in and have suddenly stummified the economy. So you, All are confidence you, is Mike, gone. are you telling me that the economic growth figures for July mm. are Labour's fault, even though Labour got elected on the 4th of July? But they're monthly figures, so of course they are. I mean, I wouldn't read, I would partly agree with Andy in that I wouldn't read too much into the figures from just one month of the year. But what I will say is that the way that it's heading with taxes rising more and more, yeah. we are not going to see growth in this economy. The not. UK already, with our huge taxes, has, I think it's the, the second highest number of millionaires leaving annually, we have. second to China. Mm. That is going to go up even more mm. if they raise taxes. They say, oh, we'll raise them all on those evil well, rich people and agree. drive them all out. There was a billionaire living in Morocco, because you don't have to pay, his, pay tax there, who was thinking of coming back to the UK, and they said, oh, we'll charge you 50 million in tax, one-off fee, to come back to the mm. UK. He was going to bring all his people, all his staff with him, yep. but now he won't, because no. the UK does acts as if they don't want them here. Where I agree with you, Chloe, is on, on non-DOMs, that, that actually might cost money, not raise money. And I think Labour needs to be looking at not being ide ideological, but looking at things that actually bring in Are money. Are you suggesting Labour should scrap the non-DOM position? Well, I, I like to think I know a reasonable amount about it. My, my partner actually works in this area. And it looks like that's not going to bring in money, that's going to cost money. All right, but do you think, therefore, Labour will you turn on it or not? No, I don't think they will. OK, and so but that's I think, naked politics, and yeah. that's irresponsible. Yeah. I think that's politics, but I think the vast majority of the things that Labour are proposing to do are in the right place, and I do think it's going to work. It's there you go. Uh, well, listen, that is... Private schools won't raise any money. Well, it will. It, it won't. Of course it, it will. It, uh, it will come at a social price.